Hi, for today's video I have something that I found uh, essentially in a garbage bin but uh, it's a piece of old test equipment uh, made by Hewlett Packard um, is it co it's called um, uh, Hewlett Packard 3400A RMS voltmeter uh, you can see this kind of old style and so on at the time when I picked it up I didn't really know what it is and um, well besides obviously <laughs> it's a, it's, a it's a it's an RMS voltmeter I looked it up on internet and uh, serial number 1218A um, I can see a serial number on the back of this uh, of this unit <coughs> uh, it, it shows that this unit was made in around 1972 it's um, it's all full of uh, a discrete through hull components and um, um, some uh, rare or nowadays irreplaceable parts so I wasn't expecting much out of this uh, because it wasn't working uh, fortunately for me uh, <coughs> the the thermocouple inside of this this voltmeter is still functional and uh, when I try to calibrate it uh, and uh, uh, replaced few parts, so mostly capacitors. Um, I wasn't able to calibrate it, and I just uh, I did some further troubleshooting with it. And what I'm going to do today is, <coughs> first of all, I'm going to take this one, uh, this unit apart. Um, I'm going to uh, show uh, how it's built, uh, go over some documentation. There's really, really nice documentation available on the internet. Uh, provided by Hewlett Packard um, I think uh, back in the days the around 70s they really re they really made a, a nice documentation you can read it as a book it contained a lot of interesting information and uh, I learned a lot while I was trying to fix this uh, uh, this voltmeter um, then I will try to <coughs> uh, do some repairs I already did some uh, um, attempted repair with using the parts that I had around unfortunately <coughs> they weren't exact fit uh, mostly capacitors so I had to order some new parts uh, uh, replacement parts uh, which weren't that, that cheap I would say um, such as a, a, a axial uh, electrolytic capacitors that uh, fit into the boards inside this unit um, they're kind of more expensive and sort of uh, uh, I think considered to be more of a replacement parts or exotic parts rather than, than something that's used in new designs um, and um, I'm going to over uh, try to go over uh, some uh, of the um, the calibration procedures for this uh, for this voltmeter and then afterwards if I have time I will uh, do some experimentation and uh, I see how this unit can still be used and uh, it still has uh, a niche that's not entirely covered by uh, modern days digital voltmeters and um, I'll explain why uh, first of all uh, this this unit is is capable of um, uh, measuring uh, RMS AC voltage. There's a trick in the, in, uh, in, in, in this. Um, the input of this uh, RMS voltmeter is AC coupled, and uh, it's capable of measuring anything from 10 hertz to 10 megahertz, um, and it states linear in entire um, range uh, of frequencies um, so this is this is this is very uh, wideband uh, uh, voltmeter and um, if you uh, look uh, for for a uh, modern day parts such as uh, uh, AC, AC components that are um, used in in digital voltmeters you'll find that uh, the range of frequencies they support sometimes um, 
none of the parts I found actually cover entire a range from 10 to 10 megahertz and in addition to this there is there is another uh, nice future or well, actually two nice futures that uh, this RMS multimeter has that I wasn't able to find in, in other uh, modern voltmeters, digital voltmeters. Um, first of all, uh, this voltmeter supports um, a crest factor. Uh, the crest factor, it's a ratio of, of uh, the peak voltage versus uh, RMS voltage, crest factors up to 10. So if you think about, for example, uh, the DC voltage crest factor one, um, sine wave 144, uh, the pulse signal or sound on average is about uh, six and uh, uh, RMS noise, uh, uh, the background noise, for example, for sound will have a crest factor of about 10. So many voltmeters require special attention and correction, uh, IC voltmeters. Uh, uh, for crest factor above four well the, so this unit is capable of measuring crest factor uh, I see waveforms uh, of about uh, crest fact uh, which have crest factor of about 10 okay let's take this uh, thing apart and um, let's see what's inside As you can see, it's a it's a through hole component construction, and it's um, all through hole. You can see right away lots of old capacitors, and uh, I'm going to take the part, the side panels uh, as well off, so that. Uh, A bottom comes off easily as well. Just need to kind of lift this. So. This bottom shell this comes uh, off easily as well. So <coughs> and uh, fortunately they use two different types of screws. So 
So this way we can see everything. See this uh, nice uh, film capacitor down there. That's the. This is the input capacitor. It's uh, it's on an input. So the input is AC coupled. It's obvious from here. And this is an adjustment for 10 kilo, uh, 100 kilohertz uh, frequency. Uh, this um, <coughs> right here is an, is an input board. Um, this is um, the first amplifier board, uh, which is um, this version uh, has uh, a tube which was um, replaced uh, it was this this tube kind of goes hot when when the unit is turned on it goes hot and it was later replaced by um, a JFET um, but uh, and this this particular uh, version uh, which I mentioned earlier is a 1972 version is um, has a, a tube and uh, besides this is the only tube that uh, I found in this in this uh, in this voltmeter you can see this board and then the next board this is a video amplifier board it has two uh, two uh, big aluminum uh, box uh, that's where the thermocouples are and uh, uh, this is the final board um, uh, which is the board a6 so I'm going to <coughs> pull out the manual so that um, I can look at manual and find the references so uh, you can see this is the the, the 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 components that I found when I was trying to to troubleshoot this this particular board uh, uh, the the video amplifier board um, the the input capacitor for, for here was uh, was shorted that was the 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 main reason why uh, this voltmeter wasn't actually working at all uh, there was an 8 ohm uh, resistance uh, total uh, on the input of the video amplifier and that made uh, this uh, transistors <coughs> Uh, were saturated and as a result the, the voltmeter was always showing as zero um, I found there are a few other um, uh, capacitors that needed to be replaced uh, absolutely and in fact all electricity capacitors on this board uh, for some reason only on this board uh, went really really bad and they were all essentially shorted uh, those are Sprague uh, capacitors made by company by Sprague they all shorted um, and uh, the DC resistance of each of them was about 8 uh, to 4 ohms I'm not sure if that particular failure is, is, uh, is specifically common in uh, Sprague capacitors I was really impressed by this documentation I haven't seen um, uh, documentation uh, uh, lately I've written so well and uh, so useful in investigation that I did and repairing the uh, the voltmeter uh, besides the over uh, this uh, block diagram you can find uh, uh, lots of text describing the principles uh, physics behind this measurements um, the calibration procedures um, the little bit information about the um, RMS voltage in general and the uh, and uh, the calculations that you might have to do uh, in with your measurements uh, troubleshooting um, uh, signals and um, uh, step by step uh, uh, troubleshooting procedures later you can find schematics uh, uh, board layouts uh, for example, this is the the layout of the board uh, where I was uh, on which I was working, uh, where I found most of the faults in this particular unit. And here is the schematics that I um, I used. It helped me a lot. Basically, um, 
I found everything I needed from these schematics and uh, <coughs> when I started measuring I was I was looking at I, uh, I found right away that uh, this input uh, transistor for example uh, was in saturation mode despite the fact that I'm only feeding uh, one millivolt uh, uh, input signal into the into the voltmeter and from there I <coughs> I was tracking it down where I found that the input capacitor um, here I printed a better a, a larger version of schematics so here I, I have uh, uh, circled in a, a red a capacitors that I found to be faulty I mentioned before those are all uh, Sprague capacitors uh, electrolytic uh, aluminum capacitors that were uh, dry or leaking or something happened to them and they were all uh, they all had a low DC resistance for about for about four to eight volts um, the investigations that I started <coughs> uh, when I started my investigation I first I looked at this uh, transistor and um, I found that there's nothing wrong with the transistor the transistor had uh, 0.6 volt uh, diode drop across um, uh, the base to emitter, base to collector, and um, the the voltage at the collector was entirely wrong. And uh, what it told me that is that this transistor was in saturation, and that happened due to the fact that there was a large. Uh, so the the AC signal that was coming from uh, uh, the the second attenuator board A3. Uh, was correct it was about 90 um, 0 0.95 millivolts or 0 0.96 millivolts in my case uh, all these values are <coughs> uh, listed here are for uh, one one millivolt input uh, full deflection so th you would expect to see about uh, uh, one uh, millivolt signal coming in here so that signal was uh, was uh, was right However, I found that uh, the, the DC bias at the base uh, was uh, about uh, minus uh, 2.15 uh, volts. And as a result, uh, this, this transistor was in saturation and uh, the output uh, from this uh, video amplifier was essentially nothing because um, all the AC signals which is were just not able to go through these boards so once I found <coughs> I started looking for the reason why uh, this DC bias is is, um, is so large or so low in this case because this is a minus 17.5 rail uh, this is plus 75 volt rail um, so they use a negative uh, VCC rail in this case uh, coming from the power supply so what happens here is that um, because these capacitors this input capacitors was essentially a short uh, the DC signal was uh, uh, was coming from uh, the second attenuator and that caused this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, BGT this uh, PNP transistor to um, uh, to saturate as a result a uh, noisy signal was uh, was actually traveling through so you can see here in the bold line this is um, uh, this is the path for the AC signal and as soon as one of these transistors saturated it blocks the AC signal It wasn't very difficult to find this fault. Um, well, as soon as I found it, I measured the, the the the. I found that there is only there were only two reasons why this DC uh, DC bias right here at the base of this uh, Q401 can be wrong. I started looking at these capacitors, but when I pulled it out, um, the first thing I did is I tried to measure. Um, I tried to measure its uh, um, RMS uh, with my um, um, LCR meter. And let me see. 
bring it up uh, a little bit. So it wasn't. So you this this uh, um, a version of LCR meter doesn't have a, a, a DC measurement uh, mode. And then so you can see at one kilohertz. This capacitor is supposed to be uh, 500 microfarad and uh, 3 volts DC. And um, it shows fine 1 kilohertz, 640 microfarad. And then I, if I switch to 10 kilohertz, boom nothing it shows as a resistor you see it comes up as a resistor if i actually um, switch it manually into the the capacitive measurement mode it shows nothing 10 hertz uh two millifarad it's uh it's unbelievable 16 So what I did at first is I measured this capacitor at one kilohertz. Uh, it shows uh, 640 microfarads, and I was like, "Whoa, oh, well, that's pretty good." So if I actually look at uh, Q, a uh, dissipation factor, it's pretty good. So then next thing I did is I measured an ESR, 0 0.3 ohm. Fine. So, so uh, just by um, quickly measuring it at one kilohertz and uh, measuring an ESR, I figured, well, that's a, it's 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 a still okay capacitor. However, on the next. Um, However, if I try to measure DC resistance, and in this case, uh, for this uh, capacitor, so if let me grab, this will be my, uh, and then I, it's uh, one, it's two or three ohm. You can see here right away. So that's not how capacitors supposed to supposed to <laughs> supposed to measure us. And then so I had to I had to the um, obviously there was something wrong with this one. And then uh, it, it I didn't uh, detect it uh, right away. So I missed that. Uh, so now I think I will be measuring the DC resistance of capacitors uh, more often. And uh, when I investigate board like this. Okay, so the parts arrived uh, today, and uh, it didn't take long. However, uh, looking for uh, for the for the for the right components on the website, it took me a while. Uh, thankfully, they actually allow me to mark um, each um, uh, each capacitor individually on its own package. Um, it didn't charge anything for it. Well, I guess it's included, um, and then so. I have the, the component numbers, um, designation numbers here, right? So that would uh, make uh, my job much, uh, much easier. And um, um, I was able to find original parts uh, for most of the, for most of the capacitors. It's uh, still same, uh, I don't know if the camera can, Focus. This is the seal. Focus. It's a sprag. I 
axial uh, capa aluminum or ceramic capacitor. Will took probably take me um, whole evening or even more uh, to replace uh, all these parts. So I'm not going to uh, have this um, uh, on a video. I'll just uh, show the, the the end result and. Uh, if everything will work fine, then we'll go on with a uh, calibration procedure and then um, try to play uh, with this voltmeter a little bit, see what uh, what we can do with it. So um, I uh, finished replacing most of the capacitors in this uh, in this multimeter, and um, I, I also replaced uh, one diode that for some reason looks suspicious to me. Um, uh, Overall, it looks good. It's still functional, so I didn't break anything. Um, I have uh, found uh, one remaining problem, though, uh, is that on this uh, video amplifier board, uh, the DC uh, bias of uh, uh, Q403 is uh, not uh, does not fit within uh, the expected range plus minus 10 percent so the expected value here is uh, minus a uh, negative 1.15 volts what i have is uh, negative 1.65 um, however uh, all the all the transistors are still uh, um, uh, correctly look correctly biased and I don't see any distortions uh, I checked with the oscilloscope so I decided to leave it as is because I don't really see a reason uh, otherwise I'll have to replace uh, some of the resistors um, none of them are shorted or um, uh, I do have all the original uh, resistors so none of them are shorted or uh, obviously uh, uh, failed so I will I decided to go as is and go through the calibration procedure um, calibration for this uh, a multimeter is a little bit uh, involved procedure it's uh, uh, requires adjustment of several um, um, variable capacitors and uh, uh, potentiometers and the uh, trimmer pods and so on so there is one for uh, one volt uh, 40 Hertz um, AC there's one for 10 megahertz uh, feedback loop and then there is one for uh, one ten scale one for full scale and there's the main um, adjustment uh, potentiometer here um, this one is uh, used for calibration um, in general uh, there are a few more um, there's one for uh, one tenth kilohertz is at the bottom uh, we'll have to op open the bottom of this and um, adjust that one uh, as well so um, I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, uh, calibrate this multimeter so the equipment uh, I'm going to use for this uh, for this calibration procedure is um, a roughly equivalent to what was suggested in the user manual first of all I'm going to use six and a half digit multimeter uh, it's an Agilent uh, 34 uh, 461A and that should be <coughs> I should be accurate enough uh, for for this uh, for this procedure. Also, I'm going to use a function generator. Uh, this is uh, another uh, Agilent uh, unit, uh, 32, 33, 500 B series uh, uh, true form uh, function generator. It allows me to generate uh, a sine wave uh, for for this calibration procedure uh, and the frequencies from uh, zero uh, to um, from DC to 30 megahertz, but obviously I'm going to be using it only for uh, 10, uh, for up to 10 megahertz. That's what the calibration, um, that's the, the frequency range of, of the of the voltmeter itself. Um, I'll be using uh, uh, this uh, Bell and coax cable, um, RG58 cable, uh, with an um, a feed through terminator in uh, uh, 50 ohm feed through. Uh, in the middle um, and uh, I'm going to use this uh, T uh, joint uh, to uh, uh, read uh, the value of uh, of the of the signal um, um, that going into the uh, 
the voltmeter as as, as close as possible uh, to the input of the of the of the voltmeter itself. So I'm going to connect connect this to the to the voltmeter. All right. The first uh, first calibration procedure I'm going to go through is uh, is 400 hertz. A full range adjustment. So I'm using um, my function generator uh, to provide me with a one millivolt RMS uh, signal for um, at 400 hertz, and uh, uh, this is this is where I'm sensing this one on on the multimeter. I do, however have a suspicion that my multimeter might actually no it doesn't it doesn't seem to affect the reading because the input uh, impedance of the multimeter is about uh, 10 uh, mega ohm so um, everything looks pretty good so here I'm ready to start the calibration procedure um, I'm going to turn this uh, this on and uh, what right now is uh, my function generator is uh, providing me with AC signal 1 millivolt RMS at 400 Hertz and that's according to the calibration procedure uh, in the manual uh, as you can see it's a little bit off so I'm going to adjust this by a tiny bit so it points to one volt. Okay, so step number one finished. Okay, the second step is to use a uh, one ten scale adjustment. So I'm going to set this uh, to one point one, and then. slightly below the 10% um, reading like they say okay that looks good okay the next step is one volt adjustment um, I'm not going to use uh, the calibration uh, pot um, that I used to uh, calibrate for one millivolt RMS well, this time I'm uh, in a one volt uh, range uh, right here, and I'm going to use the one volt um, adjustment on the right side, uh, right from looking forward, uh, left uh, to me, on the right side uh, to set it to one volt. Okay, so we have a problem here because I, I don't have enough uh, range uh, for this uh, calibration. All right, so um, uh, for a ten, uh, I've calibrated it for one volt. Uh, as it happens, uh, I needed to do uh, several iterations. So this is um, a procedure for ten megahertz. Uh, the procedure is slightly more complicated. What it means is that you first start at a uh, frequency of 400 hertz at uh, 1 millivolt range and you set it to 90% of the full scale. So this is reading 9. Uh, and the second step, then we go in, I go into the uh, 10 megahertz frequency and I set. Um, the frequency uh, right now uh, generated by a function generator it's uh, 10 megahertz I can see that the, 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 the measurements uh, the reading didn't change which is uh, pretty good because I already calibrated a little bit uh, previously so I guess my last calibration uh, stays on so <coughs> what I'm going to do next is going to go down uh, to 9 megahertz 8 7 six five four 
3, 2 and 1 megahertz. As you can see the, the reading uh, doesn't change more than uh, uh, the expected uh, 1 uh, division which is 1% and the, 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 the spec on the back of this uh, voltmeter says it can change for up to 4% uh, uh, so I think it's pretty good this adjustment is made for a hundred kilohertz and gaze at the zero at ninety percent reading and uh, it's an uh, one uh, it's made on one volt uh, uh, scale and uh, frequency that I am using uh, right now which is generate my function generator is one kilohertz so we can see we adjust it like that and then so it's now back at 90% so there's one uh, last little bit knob uh, to turn uh, this is that uh, <coughs> this uh, calibration step made at uh, 0.3 volts at uh, 3 megahertz and there is another uh, adjustment capacitor I believe at the bottom of this uh, of the voltmeter and uh, here I'm set for 287 millivolts. Um, I the 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 signal uh, value uh, gener uh, was set at 400 hertz uh, before I start doing this at the beginning of this procedure, and uh, I set it at 287 millivolts so that it reads about 90% uh, of full scale. Uh, on a uh, 0.3 volt range so now uh, I switched uh, my function generator to 3 megahertz and I'm going to ch adjust that capacitor so that it reads back exactly 90% alright Okay, so that's it. That's the end of the video about um, Hewlett uh, Packard uh, 3400A RMS voltmeter. And um, here's the news: I have a new lab assistant, the lab assistant Saba. Uh, uh, she was helping a lot during this uh, during this uh, repair, and uh, hopefully next time she will participate even more. And uh, in my next video, I will probably have some. Uh, of the experiments that I c I, I'm planning to make uh, with this uh, RMS voltmeter, most likely related to uh, an RMS noise measurements. Well, see you next time. Bye.